Can you see me and hear me clearly? No? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Awesome. Great. So let's start today's session. Sit comfortably. Keep your back and neck straight. Very gently close your eyes. And start connecting with your breath. Watch the natural flow of your breathing as you inhale and as you exhale. Slowly shift the attention to the posture. Make sure that you are properly aligned. Make your body comfortable and stable in the posture that you have chosen. Slowly and gently come back to the breath and begin to deepen the breathing. We'll chant um three times, followed by three shantis. Take a deep inhalation for um. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Join your palms together. Begin to rub your palms together. Keep your palms on your eyes. Very slowly while blinking and looking at your palms, begin to open up your eyes and come back with a big smile. 
everyone. Let us begin today's session. <clears throat> so today we are going to talk about the next stage. So yesterday we did uh, performed a pre-practice for Nadi Shodhana, right? And today we are going to go to the next stage, right? Where we are going to go for the practice of Anulom So this is the next step that you take, which prepares you for the practice of Nadi Shodhana. Okay, again, in modern times, this is known as a pranayam only, but actually it is a pre-practice for pranayama. Yeah, so modern gurus, when they came in, they uh, introduced this practice as a practice of pranayam. But uh, this is supposed to be, again, done before pranayama. It will help you when you proceed in the main of four practices, right? So uh, this, uh, you can say, when you alternate the nostrils, like alternate the breath between the nostrils without any retention, right? So that practice is called Anulom Vilom. Nadi Shudna has a very uh, unique feature attached with it, which is the feature of retention. Okay, so tomorrow we will practice the retention portion. So when we do this practice, we are going to incorporate retention. That practice is originally called Nadi Shodhana. So I will tell you exactly how it is done tomorrow, right? But for today, we need to focus on this because the better you get at this, the more easily you will be able to transition into the retention part, right? So um, again, this practice is done always in a sitting posture. So you have to make sure that you are sitting comfortably. And again, with time again, as you use your uh, right hand, you will also get used to the mudra that you are choosing to adopt. So this will only come with time. So let me just demonstrate the practice once, then I will talk a little bit more about Anulom Vinom. So you sit comfortably in any posture where your spine remains straight. You form the mudra, whichever mudra you like. Okay, You exhale fully. And then you close the right nostril, okay? So this practice always begins with the left side. Close the right nostril, begin to inhale through the left nostril. Once you finish your inhalation, close the left nostril, open the right nostril and exhale. Again. Inhale through the same nostril. Close the right nostril, open the left nostril and exhale. This forms one round of the practice. Okay, so there was no holding. Continuously we were switching the nostrils and we are completing two full breaths when we do this practice. One time we are inhaling and exhaling through the other side. And then the second round of the breath is inhalation through that same nostril and then exhalation through the other side, right? So Anulom Vilom is also called alternate nostril breathing. And this name is confused with Nari Shodhana, but there is uh, a very little difference between both of them. So this practice is actually used to prepare for the next one, right? The better you get at this one, the more easily you will transition into Nadi Shodhana. And as you begin to practice, so you have to go with the natural flow of the breath, okay? But then you begin to again gain control over the breathing, right? So in Anulom Vilom, the breathing is actually quite controlled, right? So means if I want to like after inhalation, uh, we generally want to exhale quite quickly, right? But when you go into the practice of Anulom Vilom, this exhalation and inhalation, both the processes, they become quite controlled, right? So now you are deciding uh, how much time you are going to take for each inhalation and exhalation, right? But for a beginner, it's okay. 
whatever the flow of their breath is, you cannot make them force, right? So you will uh, see a lot of people who, uh, you know, make you uh, go for this practice. They generally count, right? So like one, two, three, four, five, right? So for a beginner, this should be avoided. Why? Because the beginner will get stuck on the number. Suppose we are counting till five. So the breath is only uh, going in till three, right? So for two seconds, the beginner will hold the breath, right? So it will make them lose uh, the touch with their own reality, right? How long their breath is. And they have to naturally come to the count of whatever count is being given, right? So in the beginning, suspend this thing. Don't go for counts, even though with the counting, the person feels more, you know, somehow feels more secure and gripped to the practice. Because when uh, we, you know, say the words or when we count, it's engaging for the mind. Immediately the mind will watch, right? But this is not the, um, you know, goal of your practice. The goal of your practice is to stay in touch with the breathing. And as you increase your practice, gain more control over it. Right? So everybody will move at a different pace when they go for the practice of Anulom Vilom. So it is very, very essential that when you introduce this practice, do not go for any counts. Okay. So um, apart from that, Anulom Vilom, this practice should not be done by people who have like um, who are very withdrawn in nature, right? Because this practice, you know, when you do this practice. You will see your mind immediately, you know, uh, turns inwards, right? So you will not have to make any effort after the practice. After the practice, you will, you know, be in a very calm and quiet state. But the uh, entire focus goes inwards, right? And uh, with people who have, especially who have severe depression, right? So depression also has different stages. So first thing, if you feel you have something like that, get diagnosed before coming up with your own diagnosis, okay? There are different metrics and skills to get yourself diagnosed, right? And uh, for people who are in a very extreme stage of depression, this practice, you know, it um, further withdraws them, right? So already they are stuck in their uh, thought loop, right? So anulong below, uh, even if you are introducing it to them, go for lesser rounds, okay? Just enough to prepare them for uh, the next practice rather than like making them practice too much, okay? And uh, when it comes to the controlled breathing, so heart patients are supposed to avoid the practice altogether because um, they have to work mostly with the natural flow of the breath. Wherever they place pressure on the breath, the pressure comes on the heart, okay? So with heart patients specifically, you have to be very, very careful, okay? And retention is out of question for someone who is a heart patient, right? So apart from that, everybody can go for this practice as long as they can sit, right, and keep their spine straight. So these two requirements are essential. So uh, it places a little bit of restriction, right? Um, if you are not able to sit, then it can get problematic. Right, so um, you can go for a chair in that case, or maybe if you are unable to sit straight, you can go against the wall so that you can ensure that your back remains straight, or you can place a pillow below your buttocks that also ensures that your back remains straight. Right, apart from that, everybody can go for this practice. Right, any doubts? No. So ma'am, yeah. any back-related issues there, suppose, like in my family, there are a lot of people who have back-related things. So mm -hmm. suppose tomorrow, if I want to uh, you know, advise them for this practice. So like mm -hmm. you said, they can take the support of the pillows and all and everything and that should be okay, right? Mm -hmm. Because somebody yes. told them that, no, you have to be upright. So they were asking me, I said, I'll ask my teacher. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, so initially for a beginner, you know, a, a lot of like beginners take support of the wall or place a cushion below their buttocks to keep to ensure that the back is straight. But the main point is that the back should remain straight. If the back there is a hunch on the back, then again it will not do them uh, as good as the practice can, right? Because okay. the back is very very important when you are like. Okay. 
straight spine. Yeah, very important. So I think they can practice as long as they can make okay. the adjustment. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So Anilum Vilom again. Uh, yesterday's practice ha has its own advantages and benefits, but Anilum Vilom has a lot of advantages, right? So one thing it balances. Okay. So after you do this practice, a sense of balance is induced in your breath, in your mind. Right, so when we experience the practice, you will be able to see this more and more, right? So because you are alternating the breath, right? So you are not activating just one side, you are activating both the sides, right? Alternately, right? So it induces a lot of sense of balance. So after this practice, a lot of people are just like, this was enough, right? So it's a great way if you want, if you don't have a lot of time, you can end your session. Just with this practice, it will help your students to go out of the class with a relaxed state of mind, right? Um, it helps to soothe the nervous system. So on a physical level also, it has great impacts, right? It soothes the nervous system. So most of the benefits that I'm telling you, it's for tomorrow's practice as well. So both of them have kind of similar benef uh, benefits. Right, so it soothes the nervous system, it calms the mind. It also, uh, you know, helps you to deal with stressful situations or if you uh, face like a lot of negative emotions. So for people who get very angry or very stressed, this is a great practice, right? Hyperactiveness, it helps you to calm that thing down. So for anxiety, for uh, conditions like insomnia, this is a great practice. So just before sleeping, you can practice a few rounds and it will impact the quality of your sleep, right? So even, even if you don't have insomnia, this is a great practice. So before sleeping, you can go ahead, do the practice and then go to sleep, right? And then you have to be in a sitting posture for this. So just make sure that you're not lying down up doing the practice yeah so you will see a shift in the quality and even it is a great practice to do when you wake up in the morning right so it helps you because it creates such a sense of balance in the breathing in the body and the mind so it helps you to approach your day with a lot of balance right so if you are like that person who feels like you know it's getting very chaotic right so Rather than uh, doing it as a balancing practice, when you feel chaotic, you can begin your day with this practice so that everything, you know, goes about smoothly. Your way of managing, your way of dealing will change drastically when you do this practice. And spiritually, it is again preparing you for the practice of pranayam. So those benefits are quite, you know, uh, essential for you to move ahead in your spiritual journey. Apart from this, you will find a lot of studies in most uh, therapies also. Uh, Nadi Shodhana and Anulom Vilom, these, both these practices are introduced. So for most of your patients, you can introduce these practices. So these, uh, the pre-practices not only you know, form a foundation for your pranayam practices, these have the least contraindications, right? So these can be placed everywhere, right? In all your protocols, no matter who you are dealing with, you can add these practices, right? So let's practice for a little bit. Let's see how you know um, you feel after the practice. So we are again going to go for the uh, abdominal breathing, then the thoracic breathing, yogic deep breathing, because it's important to prepare your breath even when you practice anulom vilom, right? And then we'll go for the uh, practice we did yesterday. And then finally, we'll end our session with a few rounds of Anulom Vilom. Right? So sit comfortably. Keep your back and neck straight. And whenever you feel ready, close your eyes. Start connecting with your breath.
watch the bro uh, watch the breath as it flows check your posture be aligned as you come back to your breathing begin to deepen the breath We will begin with the practice of abdominal breathing. Try to keep your body as stable as possible. And try to change your posture after the practice if you feel the need. You can place one hand on your abdomen. Exhale fully. As you begin to inhale, expand your abdomen. As you exhale, contract your abdomen. Continue your practice. Allow the breath to flow smoothly. Try to deepen your practice with each passing breath. And the mind should be completely engaged with the movement of the abdomen. Complete your next breath and then suspend the practice. Keeping the back and neck straight, simply observe the natural flow of the breath. And watch the changes that have occurred after the practice of abdominal breathing. This 
If you feel the need, now is the time. Change your posture. If you want to make any adjustments, feel free to do so. Keep your spine straight and body stable. As we enter the next practice, if you feel the need, you can place one hand on your chest or else you can just relax your hand. Exhale fully. As you begin to inhale, expand your chest properly. Open up your chest. Once you inhale fully, directly go into the process of exhalation. Feel your lungs relax. Continue this process. Try to open up your chest as much as possible during this practice. Keep the mind engaged with the movement of the chest region as you inhale and exhale. Go for one last round and then completely suspend your practice. Keeping the back and neck straight, observe the natural flow of your breathing and see how your breath and your state of mind have changed after the practice. Before we begin our practice, if you feel the need, you can change your posture. Keep the spine straight. We will begin with the practice of you with deep breathing. Exhale completely. 
as you begin to inhale expand your abdomen your chest and take the full breath feeling a slight rise in your collarbones as you exhale first allow the collarbones to relax just to relax and finally expel out all the air from the body by contracting your abdomen properly this is one round continue your practice in the same manner feel the fullness of the breath as you inhale and as you exhale Go for one last round. And then you can suspend your practice. Come back to the natural flow of the breathing. Simply observe the changes as you went from the practice of abdominal breathing to chest breathing to yogic deep breath. If you feel the need, you can go ahead and change your posture before we begin our next practice. Keeping the back and neck straight, prepare yourself for yesterday's practice. You breathe in and out through each nostril a few times. Form the mudra with your right hand, either the pranak mudra or the nasagra mudra, whichever one you find most comfortable. Exhale fully. Close the right nostril. You begin to inhale and exhale through the left side.
keep the inhalation and exhalation equal. As you gain more control over your breath, start regulating the time period for which you are inhaling and exhaling. Try to keep your breath deep. Complete one last breath. Relax your hand. Prepare yourself for the same practice from the other side. Back and neck. Remain straight. Form the required mudra from the right hand. This time, close the left nostril after you exhale fully. Begin to inhale through the left side. Try right side. As you begin to gain more control over your breathing, regulate the time of each breath. Try to go for deep breaths as you advance in your practice. Then next round, suspend your practice and relax your hand. Just observe the natural flow of the breath.
Keeping the back and neck straight. If you feel the need, change your posture. We will enter our final practice. Practice of Anulom Balom. Take a few moments to relax uh, yourself and come in a comfortable and stable posture. Form the required mudra with your right hand. Exhale fully. Close the right nostril. Begin to inhale through the left side. Once you complete your inhalation, close the left nostril, open the right nostril and begin to exhale. Start inhaling through the right nostril. As you complete your inhalation, switch the nostril, close the right side, open the left side, and exhale fully. This is one round. Continue your practice. Go along with the natural breath. Don't force your breathing at any point of time. My entire focus and attention should be on the breath as it flows through the nostrils. Complete these two more drums and then relax your hand.
deep in the back and neck straight. Watch your breath as it flows naturally. Experience a sense of calmness and peace induced by this practice. We will end today's session with one Om chanting followed by three shantis. Keep the back and neck straight. Take two deep breaths before we chant Om. Inhale deeply. Exhale. Inhale, exhale, take a deep inhalation for Om, Om. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Join the palms together and gently bow down. Taking a few moments in our day for a sense of respect and gratitude towards everything we have. Begin to rub your palms together. Keep the palms on the eyes. Allow your eyes to absorb the seat. Do this two more times. So begin to rub the palms together properly. Keep them on the eyes. One last time. Rub the palms together. Keep them on the eyes. Very slowly, while blinking and looking at your palms, begin to open up your eyes and come back with a big smile. Any problem or difficulty that you faced? Um, no, ma'am. Okay, great. So what I observed was you were applying a lot of pressure when you were doing the mudra, right? So you have to try to ease that pressure, very gently close your uh, nostrils. So that was like I, what I saw, what I observed was this only that maybe the pressure was a little bit uh, more than required. So that will block the other side like I told you yesterday. Right. Apart from that, any issue or difficulty? No, ma'am. Oh, great. So I will see you tomorrow. We will practice more tomorrow. And uh, yeah, take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. You too, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.